Well, let's go live. Uh, staying in Westminster, we can speak now to Artie uh, Shanker. She's a policy analyst at Open Europe, an independent policy think tank. She's joined by Tom Baldwin, Director of Communications for People's Vote UK. Artie, perhaps I can just talk, uh, ask you, first of all, where you think we are after Theresa May spoke last night. Is there a change in the mood of, as to where we're headed? So I think Theresa May's speech did backfire somewhat last night. If we think where we are in this process, she's still very keen to put her deal to the Parliament again. Um, and, and while she suffered a more narrow defeat the second time she did that, it was still a substantial defeat. She still has to win over a lot of Eurosceptic Conservative backbenchers and, of course, the all-important Northern Ireland Democratic Unionist Party. Now, I think the DUP are probably the key piece of the puzzle there. If she can win them over, then other MPs may start to fall in line. However, they haven't yet said that they would support the deal. And even in that circumstance, I mean, the chances are the Prime Minister does need the backing of not an insignificant number of Labour MPs in order to pass this. And what we saw with her statement last night is that she has alienated some of those MPs. I mean, Lisa Nandy, a Labour MP in a Leave voting seat, who said that she was actively looking for ways to support this deal after the statement last night has said that the Prime Minister doesn't de deserve and wouldn't get the support she needs to pass this. That puts her in a very difficult position. Tom, I can see you nodding your head there. I'm just wanting big march at the weekend. Is there a sense that things are moving in the direction you would wish? Yeah, I think so. I mean, what you're saying now is uh, I, I, it's not just the, the Parliament doesn't want this broken Brexit deal, but nor does the country. All the polls say that you know very, very few people want this deal. So when Theresa May is trying to play Parliament against the people, what you're going to see on Saturday is not just many MPs marching to give the public the final say, to put it to the people, but also hundreds of thousands of people. And if Theresa May wants to open her curtains and Downing Street, she'll see all the people walking past. And Artie, look, if Theresa May is hoping that this is really focusing every, everybody's mind because she's, as she has done all along, said it's my deal or no deal, is there a sense that actually she could lose control of the whole process if she loses this vote? Yes, well, I, sorry. <laughs> the difficulty here is, of course, that we're not sure what, what, what the other option is. I mean, if we think back to what European Council President Donald Tusk said yesterday, he, was, he left the question very open-ended. If MPs don't vote for the deal next week, what is it that happens next? Do we get an extension or is there no deal? Now, very clearly, the Prime Minister has tried to use this ambiguity uh, to her advantage in order to uh, ensure that Labour MPs can back the deal if they're afraid that they're, what we're facing is a no deal, and Eurosceptic MPs could back the deal if they're afraid what we're facing is a very long extension and no Brexit. Now, that question will need to be answered very, very soon, as, as your presenter was saying before this. Uh, if the deal is voted down next week, the Prime Minister has said that MPs would have the chance to decide what happens next. Do they force her hand and ask her to go back and ask for a long extension? And indeed, would the EU be willing to grant that? That does cause problems for them in terms of their own Europe European parliamentary calendar. Tom? 